Do you want to like clap or something so you can see in the waveform? Like, if we are all silent, then it will show up on your waveform. Brett, are you? Th- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, were we supposed to be quiet? <laughs> Welcome to Let's Rewatch, the show when we like to watch movies we loved in our youth and see if they're actually any good. I'm Nick. I'm Brett. I'm Sam. And I'm Ash. And we are joined by a a returning guest this week. We've got Patrick Edwards. Welcome, Patrick. And I'm Ash. Uh, Can I do that again? My name's Pat and I love movies. Yeah. Hello. Welcome back. Hey. Hey, guys. How are you all? Good. Ooh, pretty good. We're still still alive? Still Barely. alive. alive. Mm-hmm. I'm completely drawing a blank. What movie did we watch with you the first time around? Alien. 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 Okay. That was in... You just don't read my emails, do you? I like put in the email. <laughs> I was like, we're having Patrick back in parentheses, guest from oh, Alien. He, this he is was... America. People only read the subject. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and also, you emailed him when he was not in America. All so right. he well. was... and, and also, Patrick is not like that dude from Alien. Patrick's Patrick. Yeah. So that's all okay. I needed. You've well, traversed... Yeah. I didn't need con- your Apparently, code. it wasn't all you needed, as you just <laughs> asked. <laughs> Patrick is keyboard punching Pat. Isn't that your yeah. favorite movie, though, Nick? Uh, it, it, we've talked about this. It's not my favorite movie, but I do think it is the best movie. I know okay. that may be kind of contradictive. Yeah. I just, I'd love Almost Famous more, but mm-hmm. Alien is a perfect movie. I can, no, no, I can totally see what you're saying. So, mm-hmm. whereas you can say objectively, this is a better quality movie. Yeah. But. As far as from emotional standpoint, what almost yeah, famous, almost means famous is just so so special to me. Funnily enough, I just actually just watched uh, not for the first time, of course, but um, Aliens last week. Oh. Yeah, it's on HBO Go now. Nice. So, That's what we should have done with you. Now I feel really oh. stupid. <laughs> we should have done that movie. It's, oh well. We always feel like like we watch these movies like oh I'm gonna watch all of the sequels after we do this like we saw Alien mm-hmm. and I was buckled in I'm gonna watch all the sequels and I never did never did yeah before Crocodile Dundee I'm like I'm gonna watch all the sequels and then we actually watch Crocodile Dundee oh, yeah. <laughs> you're like no, no. never again no. with that one yeah. uh, for me I was planning on it after because um, you even called it said after the episode. You'll probably go home and want to watch all of them. For me, so much of what I watch is depends on what's on the what's on the streaming platforms. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't get out much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there's also so many good things. Like I feel like I want to go back and I want to watch old stuff. But then a mm-hmm. new season of Black Mirror comes out, you know, and you only have <laughs> yeah. so much time in the day. Tell me. Yeah, about I just watched that too. I just caught up on all that. I have not. I've seen the first oh. two of season four. Oh, so you saw the 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 Callister one? one? The, Cal- yeah. yeah. I want that to be a spinoff show so Me bad. Too. Well, they're talking Jesse, about doing it. I, I Jesse mean, Fleming. <laughs> I, I don't know how much we should talk about it if people haven't seen it. Yeah. Like, I watched I'll that whole episode it. thinking, how can this possibly be a series? And then finally I got it as the episode went on. I, I'm not saying we should talk about it, but... but uh how now that we've got like entire seasons dumped at once and you don't have to wait for seven o'clock on a Tuesday to watch the next episode of something like how much time do you really need to allow people to watch a thing after it comes out now? Yeah, I don't know. A, I, I think you need to give a few months. <laughs> yeah, I'm a believer in you. Feel free to give a warning. But at the same time, <laughs> you, out there, you can watch it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Say, no, but say, a warning. Give a yeah. warning. Say, hey, we're going to talk about this. Skip ahead a little bit. But uh Especially like Brett said, it's something that's been out there for a while. Yeah. But, uh, like Jesse Plemons doing his best Matt Damon impression. Well, I mean, he did that when he was born. Like that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> when he was in Breaking Bad, it was always like, oh, there's that guy who, who's not Matt Damon who looks like Matt Damon in yeah. Breaking Bad. Anyway, so Patrick, you're you're working on another book. You're not quite yeah. ready to announce, but Space Trippin was your, your big debut book that we talked about in yeah. the last episode. You're working mm-hmm. on another Yes, the sequel. Mm-hmm. Sequel As to Space talk, Tripping. Yeah. Yes, the sequel to Space Tripping. No okay. final title. Okay. Or, I mean, so Brett, Brett has Brett's some good ones. title yeah. was pretty good. <laughs> Space Tripping Balls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so it occurs to me, I really don't know much about this process. Like how long when a guy starts writing a book until the book is published and people can read it. It's probably variable. 
Yeah, it's variable. So, um, well, if you're George R. R. Martin. <laughs> oh my God! I, you know what's funny? Within the last couple of days, real quick, I was curious because I saw there's something came out that he was hinting it wouldn't again. This year's going to go by and no new books still from him. Mm. And then I was curious and I went and looked at the gap, and it's been something. It was like 11 was the last time a book came out. Wow. 2011. 2011. Wow. Bef- wow. Before that, it was like five years. And it's gotten longer each time, if you look. It was yeah. like the first one came out in the 90s, and it was like two years later, then like three years later, and like wow. five, and now we're on like seven years. It's Think crazy. about it. How much money is he like bringing in from the yeah. TV show? And yeah, the he books? doesn't like, have to work. Yeah, like, but, you don't have to work that freaking hard well, if you're getting as that an HBO author, As somebody who is yeah. trying to make a living off of this, if somebody dumped a truckload of money on you and made a TV show out of your books, would you feel so motivated to write the next one? I would. I feel like I'd yeah. want to, yeah, get it out there and also enjoy it, want to finish. And even if, even if you're kind of feeling bored of it, maybe get it done so you can move on <laughs> to something else. Well, maybe it's the opposite of motivation because, like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, the JK fear. <laughs> yeah, JK Rowling talked a lot about, like, when the Harry, the Harry Potter series was coming to an end, like, the amount of pressure. Mm. she yeah. had you know he probably has a lot of pressure which oh, yeah. to get it depending right. on who you are like some people thrive under that i personally like cripple under that and then just like get writer's block and i can't write anymore you know because i feel too much anxiety mm-hmm. so maybe he just has like intense because now the stakes are even higher it's not just that your book series is popular it's that there's like a fucking tv show based off of it and everything like the yeah. most popular tv show yeah exactly the world. yeah <laughs> Which reminds me, I'm going to need your uh, tweaks on the scripts we're working on as soon as possible. Uh. <laughs> Get it done. That's got to be weird, though. Uh, that would be weird for me seeing a show or a movie that lapped my books, got out mm, ahead of yeah. me. Yeah. So how, and how would that influence? Did I think that would just make me and, feel worse. I'd be yeah. like, oh, my God, yeah, I'm a failure. Else went ahead and wrote these Where it's like, Because at yeah. that point. At that point, when he puts the book out, is it just the novelization of the show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's why it's taking so long. He's waiting yeah. to see how it ends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he can yeah. just write what they did. Yeah. Or see how the fans react and be like, okay, I'll give them what they really want. Yeah. Well, I, This is I, smart, actually. <laughs> I really enjoyed Dexter, how the first book and the first season of the show were the same story. Spoilers. And, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then they moved in completely different directions. So I had like double two Dexter, two mm-hmm. different universes I could follow. Yeah. yeah. And that was kind of cool. I just, I don't think people are going to give George Martin that much leeway. Like they're going to try to tie the books and the TV show together too tightly. Well, from people who have read the books that have told I've, me is the TV show is already so far off it? from it's the books. Way, so, well, in a lot of ways I like it because it is consult. There are so, I honestly... I don't even want to go back and read them because they're so thick, but I'm <laughs> going to be, I'll get the new one when, when it comes out and I'll read it and I'm going to be lost because the, he introduces so many new characters in the last book, in the fifth book, all of a sudden. Wow. So you've got this core group, right? And they're dying left and right, but you still have your, you know, your main people that are hanging in there. And then all of a sudden in like the fourth and fifth books, he drops another dozen main characters. And Who are not so in the TV show. They're not in the TV show. That's or awesome. they're, or you have characters in the TV show that are like amalgamations of two or three of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's, it's, yeah, it's interesting. But you actually asked a question, Nick, is about what is that process? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, welcome to our Game oh, of yeah. Thrones podcast. <laughs> well, as far as the, the initial writing, I mean, that is, that's a, that's a crapshoot. It depends, you know, you got people like Stephen King, who's like, he knocks them out in 60 Over days or weekend. something like that. It's, yeah, it's ridiculous. Well, that's because um, he hires got, people to write it for well, him. Oh, is he one of those? Oh, that makes me sad. Yeah. I knew, like, I knew, like. I heard that at Tom Clancy, but. I yeah, Stephen Clancy King has Coons, ghostwriters. It's like Clancy Coons, Patterson. They've got staff that just write, quote unquote. Mm. I think Patterson when you novels, get up but... to that level, that you just have to probably. I don't. I don't. I hope I never get there. I mean, I'd like to get to that <laughs> level economically, um, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I just I would feel weird putting my name on something that I didn't actually make. Totally. I, yeah. But um, so the initial writing—that's who knows, right? It could take decades, years, months, days, weeks. Um, for me, it was Initial, almost a like year. like an outline? 
like like the no, first like draft. writing the manuscript like writing okay. the manuscript to a point and it can you can call it a first draft or a draft to be submitted to be published um and then once it's once you once you're at that point for me with mine with the first base tripping it was almost exactly a year from when i submitted the manuscript to when it was on the shelves okay wow uh, and, I had and that's because you won the ink shares contest right yeah mm-hmm and then because you go Which through the awesome. editing and the proofreading and the formatting and they make all, and and that was actually a pretty tight schedule because they didn't have a lot of material edits that need to be made on it. Oh, that's um, good, right? Yeah, no, it's great. Um, I, I loved that the first. Uh, there's like three rounds of editing. They call there's the uh, oh, I'm forget I forgot the terms of it, but the first one's like high level story stuff, character, and then they go into more grammar, and <laughs> that's not as fun. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's the proofreader. I got really mad the first time the proofreader sent me their edits back. It's like, all right, it's their job. It's their job to poke holes in every little thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, I had to walk away for a second. Like, it's okay. It's okay. It's their job. <laughs> but it it's all depends. Like, so there's another – I have a friend who is – his book is also going to be published on the same uh, publisher, Ink Shares. And he got his at the same – around the same time I did. His is just coming out now this year. Oh, wow. Um, he had – is a couple of things going on. He, I think he basically rewrote the whole thing, though. That was part of it. Wow. Something had, wow. there was some, I don't know all the details of that, but I'm excited for his book. But it uh, – yeah, so he basically said – he was going through the editing process, and then he said, I just came up with an idea that was too good that I had to basically rewrite half the book or something. So, uh, so that's crazy. Yeah, it can it – can, so if, if – roughly a year, if everything is kind of lined up and ready to go. But like in his case, it's more like two. Okay, so we got we got another book to look forward to, but well yep. more than a year. I really yes. like space stripping. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm reading really it now, did. and I like it. <laughs> thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I said I, this in my re- in my review of it on Amazon. No, no, it's it's got like really good action pacing, which is like hard in books. Yeah. Thank you. That's that was probably the hardest part too. Is out writing an action scene that doesn't. Because you want to describe what's going on, but you want it to feel because quick, right? If someone's yeah. running around and yeah. throwing punches and shooting at someone, that's all happening quick. But if you're taking a and it starts and, out with a cool action sequence, you know, yeah, a, a, an alien drunkenly crash landing on Earth. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so you've also got a another podcast that you're a regular on. A yeah, DJ podcast for mm-hmm. whom the dice rolls. I mean, you guys infected me with the bug last time I came out and saw you. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> guessed it on a couple other ones and i just really i mean i'm a podcast fan i drive around a lot and listen to them but uh yeah i um some uh local people here in uh i live in the greater cincinnati area who um i was a guest on their podcast the uh, the negative one and they wanted to put together a real play dungeons and dragons podcast where we play D and record ourselves hopefully being funny while doing it nice. um we well, yeah the fourth episode it's called for sorry i should say it's uh, called for whom the dice roll available wherever podcasts are sold and uh, <laughs> our fourth episode just came out late thursday night friday we've got a couple more already recorded and we're recording a few more tomorrow actually nice. awesome. it's a lot of fun like a big recording weekend Yep. Uh, there was another one that it wanted me to. I was was talking to about guest spotting on. I said that that's a, that's a tall order for the business. <laughs> Too yeah. many podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> Too many. Well, so we're anxious to get your insight on Ace Ventura: Pet Detective, mm-hmm. which won our uh, our poll, our uh, Jim Carrey poll by four percent. Just four percent. Just four. I've yeah. Lo- oh, I voted for the mask. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> was Mask second place? Yes, the Mask yeah. was second place. Come so on, guys. Brett really wanted Mask. I really wanted Ace Ventura. I really wanted Ace Ventura. So fuck you. What I, <laughs> <laughs> what I really wanted, which wasn't even on the poll, is Earth Girls Are Easy. Oh, I know. Really We've been talking about that. I'm doing but that. Jim Carrey, Jeff but Goldblum, he's, it's, Damon he, Wayans as aliens. He's not like the main. I would have been kind of. I never seen man, it though, actually. Right? Well, it's it. I mean, I guess you would. Oh, say that Jeff would have been Goldblum perfect for lead. Patrick too. God yeah. damn it! Yeah. <laughs> oh, I sorry. guess you'd say Jeff Goldblum was the lead, but the three of them were like the leads. Oh, okay. The, yeah. the only reason I voted for Mask is those are both movies that again I also really liked when, as a kid when they first came out, and I'm sure they both have things that will be interesting from the lens of today to look yeah. back on. I mean, um, honestly, I, I want to watch both of them. It's a. Uh, I don't remember as much about the mask though. That's what okay. was interesting to me. I feel like I, yeah, 
Ace Ventura. And again, what was funny, it could be like Alien and Aliens, where it could be remembering things from the sequel. Right. That was in the first. So I was shocked. Which came first, Mask or Ace Ventura? Mask. Mask, right? Mask. Same year. What? Oh, is that which... the year when he had like five movies or something? Like, there Three. Was... Tell me the next one. This. What was the third movie in 1994? Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber. Ah, oh, that was just a, uh, off yeah. the top of my head. I didn't even That's know. That's a big year. I wow. would have told you that the mask came way later, and I would have been wrong. Wow. I was shocked to see they were all three that same year. Mm-hmm. So I, was, I really wanted to do Jim Carrey because I started thinking about In Living Color. And how yeah, I think I this go back. poll was your idea, right? Yeah. The, the beginning of the idea anyway. Yeah. Yeah, because I was thinking like, you know, I, I love Key and Peele and, you know, thinking about sketch comedy and how great In Living Color was. I always forget that ago. he was on Living Color. Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. Jim Carrey was, I was gonna on say, Living did Color. You think of it because of the uh, Grammys. No, what happened at the Grammys? There was a uh, performance by uh, it was like was it Cardi B and Bruno mm. Mars that was very like in Living Color esque. Huh. Oh, yeah, we missed know. the Grammys. <laughs> Did you guys watch in Living Color? No, maybe I don't you guys think are a little just young. aware of yeah, it. My, I don't think so. My dad had uh, the homie the clown okay. sock, and and whenever we said something that wasn't funny, he just say, "Homie, don't play that," and he hit me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So physical abuse. No. It was a sock. It was just funny, kidding. but like, <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. just a sock. All right. <laughs> so, did you, you, you guys don't remember Fire Marshal Bill? Oh, Jim Carrey. I've seen the clip. No. So that for what it's worth, there's great Jim Carrey material out there in In Living Color. Yeah. Um, there was another big character, and since you guys don't even remember, probably I'm just nope. spinning my wheels here. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but That's somebody okay. else who's listening to the podcast right now is She's screaming, shouting, yeah. <laughs> "Yeah, it's this one!" So I don't know. Like, is Jim Carrey is an interesting question of whether he'll hold up. Like, that was some like the most over the top slapstick comedy, yeah, of all time. I feel like we've maybe I don't know if we've just talked about this before or maybe we've talked about it on the podcast. But I feel like the 90s, there was a style of comedy that is not in vogue anymore. And True. Mm. that style of comedy we that discussion the other day. Yeah. was like very yeah. over the top slapstick esque physical comedy. And this dude owned the 90s. Yeah, absolutely. But it's interesting how like if you if you look at comedy throughout the years, there's trends in like the style of comedy that's popular. And this was this was definitely the time frame where. You it's know, it's like more subtle in recent years. It's I, I think co- the shift is now more situational comedy yeah. is more popular, you know, and even I mean, the people who do great characters like um, the Anchorman. You can't like, think of anything. Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Like, Ferrell. Yeah. Will Ferrell <laughs> does these crazy characters, but he's still a very subtle guy. Mm-hmm. Where Jim Carrey will like jump out of a freaking window. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder if that's going to feel tedious and exhausting it could feel dated yeah. i think like that that style it, it's you know the, a lot of stuff comes in in waves and uh i think uh, what i'm anticipating is that it was popular because it was so wildly different at yes the time. Yeah. at the time and and the newness of it is it, it played know. a lot into like why it was popular yeah well think about steve martin like, I mean, he was very much about like physical comedy. And it's true. At that time, he was probably considered way over the top. Like, this. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But this was also, I feel like, around Steve Martin's heyday too. It was like after. Father of the Bride and no, like the no. real goofy Steve Martin stuff would have it's been like earlier, the earlier, jerk late seventies and eighties. Like, yeah, yeah. But even like, because we actually watched. I don't remember if we watched the whole movie. Bryce and I recently, but we watched at least a scene from The Jerk, and it's not as over the top as Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey is so much more over the top. Yeah, he's like amped to 11. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think, you know, clearly Jim Carrey is the attraction here. And um, it, I think Mitch was talking about themes and, you know, wh- whether we would visit, you know, multiple movies from the same actor. 
I could see us doing more Jim Carrey. Yeah, in the that'd future. be great. Well, There's the, a what, rich well here. What yeah. happened with the poll is Brett and I were talking, and I was like, because he, uh, Brett, still really wants to watch Truman Show. <laughs> Yeah, that's the only <laughs> Jim Carrey movie I was actually interested in watching. But <laughs> I'd be totally up for it, but it, to me it doesn't read as the crazy over yeah, the top so, in living yeah. color Jim Carrey. I feel like there's two Jim Carreys. There's wacky Jim Carrey and then serious Jim Carrey. And I feel like we should do two polls. So we've yeah. got the wacky poll and then we should do the serious poll where we could do Eternal Sunshine, Man Truman Show, Man, Man, Man on, on the, the Moon, moon. Yeah. Truman Show, maybe Man the Majestic. The Oh yeah, Majestic. I never saw Majestic. Oh, I really like Neither. Majestic. Like it's not a Jim Carrey movie, but I really mm-hmm. like it. I'd be interesting to see Man on the Moon because I saw that Jim and Andy documentary. I haven't seen the documentary. I love that movie. Though. Air quotes documentary. Oh, I think I think the whole thing wow. is fake, but I mean, anything related to Andy Kaufman, you walk into it going, "Is this bullshit?" Exactly. <laughs> but I love it. I think it's brilliant. But I think it's fake. But it's brilliant. <laughs> so who else is in this movie, guys? Tone Loke. Tone Loke? <laughs> so that was uh, that's what thing. I would be interested in. That was, was another Tone thing Loke that movie. Mitch posted on Facebook in our Facebook group recently. Like musicians who do a really good performance in a movie. Oh yeah. Not that they're singing in the movie, not that they're a musician but they're in acting. the movie. That they're acting. I'm not going to say I remember much about Tone Loke's performance here. It'll be interesting to see if that counts. You guys should do a Tone Loke month. Where you have, well, you're I, starting with Ace. You got Blank Check, Surf Ninjas. I love Titan. Oh, oh we got to do Surf Blank ninjas. Check. Surf Ninjas. Can I Quonsu be honest? Dudes. I have no idea who you guys are talking about. Uh, yeah, you know either. the song uh, Funky Cold Medina? No. Wild Thing? Uh, can you sing it? Wait, like the classic rock and roll song, Wild Thing? No. No. Like oh. the 90s rap. Here, no. <laughs> Uh-oh. Are Funky you, Cold are you Medina. Do it for us? Uh, I would like you to rap it for us. Yeah. Oh, no, thank rap you. it for us. <laughs> oh. Thank you so much. That's so nice, but no thank you. <laughs> can you ask Alexa Which, to play Funky Cold Medina? You know we can't put this in the show. Oh, oh yeah, wait, You got 15 seconds, right? Alexa, stop. Yeah. <laughs> no, that is not how that rule works. No. Oh, really? No. Yeah, it no. really is. Not like when you drop a cheeseburger on the floor. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> thinks that you can legally play a song for 15 seconds, but it is not true. We're a review really? show, so we could play longer. <laughs> <laughs> no. We're a parody show, so... Well, so, yeah, it's I, only illegal if you get caught, Ash. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of things are only illegal if you get caught. Hey, <laughs> so I think Tone Look will be I'm interesting. <laughs> so, but there's somebody else in this movie I think Ash is going to be really excited about. Who? Do you who? guys remember who else? I've I've never seen this movie, oh. so I don't know. Okay. Oh, you never seen this? No, I've never seen this, and I've honestly I don't think I've ever seen The Mask either. So yeah, that's I why I was seen The Mask. I was cool for either. So this movie came out in 1994, which was also the first year of Friends. Oh. So Courtney Cox. Was no, oh, yeah. that's right. I did watch the trailer and see she her. She was a known entity, but I don't think people were like really crazy about her until after a few mm. years deep into Friends. Yeah. So this was kind of early in her fame. A few years deep into something sounds really weird. Just don't, and- <laughs> don't ever say that again. <laughs> and an actress. <laughs> Who's from one of my favorite movies that you all broke my heart when you reviewed Blade Runner? Yeah, Sean Young. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like her. Yeah, I, I thought you'd have something to say about the Blade Runner connection here. Um, Don't worry, Patrick. I'm on your side. I got you. No, um, I mean there there are fair criticisms. The <laughs> uh, the the not the up. utter lack of consent in the love scene is very very fair. <laughs> Unless that. she's a robot, Very... and which is fine. <laughs> oh God, no. Nick, <laughs> Nick! Oh God! But he didn't know. He didn't know. Then it's not fine. <laughs> no. He... Unless he's a robot and he was programmed to do it, in which case. Oh my God! It's not I fine. Can't. It's just, I can't. It's just a, a weird Disney thing. animatronic sequence. So you're like uh, totally okay with Westworld? I'm assuming. Anyway, yeah. let's not. Let's just move on. So I I got my tickets for. <laughs> Blade Runner Secret Cinema. Oh, Ooh. yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. If you guys don't know Secret Cinema, look up Secret Cinema. It's like you basically go to this experience where you live the movie. I very much want to do this. Come to London, to man. It. Let's go. 
I'm so Brett afraid is of so, flying. He's so scared of flying. <laughs> really? Are you really? Yeah. Just take some Ambien. Yes. <laughs> no, he's scared of drugs as well. So. Oh, I'm not scared of drugs. I just don't like drugs. You're just, what, what are you <laughs> afraid of? You're in a giant he's... metal tube 30,000 feet in the air going like 400 miles an hour. You know, statistically, yeah, yeah. you're more <laughs> likely like to die in a car crash. He's just scared of sitting next to babies. Not when I work at home. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude. Yeah, flying with a baby. <laughs> flying with babies, no joke. You know what it is? Can the zero minutes. <laughs> The plane's not that bad if you have all if you have like all their stuff that you need for them, you know, yeah. stuff to keep mm-hmm. them occupied. It's security. It's packing and getting all the shit yep. over security. Oh. It's brutal. Yeah. I found really good podcasts have been helping me on planes, so Oh, okay. Yeah. I just yeah. need yeah. to be completely distracted and, from reality. And a <laughs> little little something something. Yeah. A little oh, drink. Yeah. Lots of drink. Oh. Also <laughs> do it more. The more you do it, the less nervous you get. I love flying. Nope, that is not true with him. It's 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 like an allergy. The, the more he does it, uh, the worse his reaction is. I'm like really? the freak that's like, yeah, we're about to take off, or like, yeah, yeah. we're about to land. Like, I love that part. I, feel See, like I, do, the, I do the short, like, one hour flight to NorCal, and it's like, all right, that was that was okay. And then, like, I did flew to Florida, and I was just like, after a couple hours on the plane, I was just like, oh my god, I'm still on the plane. <laughs> How are we flying this long? <laughs> Yeah, maybe Europe's not the best choice. Yes. Yeah. was great flying on the plane with Brett. It was wonderful. See, Bryce just, like, takes something to sleep and then just knocks out. And then I'm left on the airplane by myself the whole time because I, I can't sleep, sleep on an airplane. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh. well, I guess, I guess I'm going to watch the entire season of Flight of the Concords again because it's the only thing I have <laughs> on my iPad. <laughs> Why face me? I can sleep anywhere, anytime. Just oh, drop on the head. The most gosh. uncomfortable positions if I'm tired enough. Wow. Yes. Knock right out. That's Very like jealous. me. I like sleep sitting up, like with my head up. Yeah. Oh my God. Brett's like, how do you do I that? Can't. I even I flew. I'm sorry. Listener, that we're talking about airplanes for so long. I even flew. And what's with the food? <laughs> what's with the food? I even flew first class once with the reclining seat and everything that like turns into a bed. Still couldn't sleep. Mm. Just can't oh, do it. Man. You're broken. Speaking of what's with the food, <laughs> on our Europe flight, the fucking Aer Lingus people were like laughing at us for having paid for a meal because the flight comes with the meal. Uh, and I was like, yeah, but I'm getting a steak. And like they brought all the other food out to everyone else. And it's just this like creamy mush garbage. It's like, who are you laughing at? Did you want to eat that? But anyway. <laughs> We pay for wine. your meals. <laughs> My trick is pay for the exit row. For a long flight, pay for the exit row. It might as well be first class to me. Mm. It changes the Because you can like game. stretch your feet out. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's like $80 and it's so worth it. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So what do you guys expect out of Ace Ventura? <laughs> but this movie that we're supposed to be watching. Oh, I'm sorry. Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Pet Detective. Yeah. So, Ash, you like pets. I love pets. I'm so excited. I like... And you ain't seen it. I think part of the reason why I was more excited for this movie than The Mask is because, like, a pet detective, strangely enough, sounds more interesting to me than some weird mask that turns this guy into a cartoon. So I was like, I'm, I don't know. I'm just excited about that. Uh, I'm also excited to finally find out where that Skyrim meme came from where he's got the two arrows in his oh, leg. I don't know. Sec- oh, is that the second one? Oh there. no. Um Sorry. but uh yeah I don't know what to expect. I know that the all righty then comes it comes from this movie, right? I don't know. Or is that just a Jim Carrey mask. thing? It uh, might be no. this movie. It's definitely it's this, this movie because I found was... a gif of it. Yeah, the, the mask, mask is somebody smoking. Stopped. Oh, yeah. yeah. Somebody and, uh, stopped me. Somebody that stopped me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody stopped Yeah. But, um, I, yeah, I'm excited. I feel like I missed a lot of wacky Jim Carrey movies during that time frame. So well, What we've learned today is they all were in the same year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you missed that year. They're all that year. Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited to see how a pet detective thing works out i guess i don't have a lot to say because i don't know much about it brett counterpoint why do you hate this movie uh i am expecting the the hottest of garbage from this film (laughs) (laughs) i will say in your defense i did look up the rotten tomato reviews and the mask does have a much higher rating than this film this will be (laughs) 
surely <laughs> one of the worst films we've watched <laughs> on God. the podcast. Worst in Crocodile Dundee, The Substitute Man. We, we all enjoyed, oh. and but recognized its awfulness, but enjoyed The I'm Substitute. I'm glad you said something about that, because I know you guys have already done it. That would have been a perfect one for me because that's a movie I loved. As a uh, <laughs> yes, I could not. I mean, it's show. been a long time. See, I get this is why we get along on, on the internet. <laughs> Nick <laughs> just like lost so much respect for you as a human being. I, said, I, said, I haven't it's been seen it. My revenge. It's, been, <laughs> it's, it's probably been like, I don't know, easily 15, 16, 17 years since I've seen it. But I just remember loving that movie. Mark Anthony with one sweatsuit leg pulled up. <laughs> it's a look. But yeah, I've mm-hmm. I've uh, I've campaigned against some of the polls, uh, but never as hard as I've campaigned. You tried, this one. which gives me so much joy that it still lost <laughs> I, by like four so percent. Didn't want to watch this movie. I'm, I'm more into this. I love I think, it. I think Brett just doesn't get the highbrow intellectual humor of a man physically talking out his own ass. <laughs> oh my god is Wait, that, that gonna happen, happen? yeah no. that's this fucking oh, movie, the whole movie guys oh. wait what dude there's no way this can be good <laughs> this is a perfect time to get sam's ex <laughs> I, I think we just did i saw this as a kid and i think i watched it but i don't remember any kid opinions of this movie i think like i remember a scene where he's like saving goldfish from a fire in a pet shop or something that's pb herman isn't it that's yeah, pb that herman, herman. <laughs> but it might also be this <laughs> anyway so that's my only memory of this movie is totally not this movie I, there's no way it can be good guys <laughs> <laughs> especially based off of that but it's clearly like a very well loved jim carrey film like i feel like i hear people quote it is it often. very well loved or very well known because those are two different Well, clearly things. it was well-loved because it was winning by a landslide until Brett started campaigning against it actively. <laughs> because it's the one people know the most. Uh, yeah. But, uh, and this, this doesn't really actually say a lot about what to expect, but the person I hated most in my childhood, this was their favorite movie. Oh. Uh, oh, so you're coming in with some already pre... Well, it's... Pre... A little uh, bit, a little Psychological bit. damage towards this bit. film. So I'll, I'll just say, of course, I'm into this. I mean, like, this is the goofy Jim Carrey that I wanted to see. I think this is the best case scenario for over-the-top goofy Jim Carrey that I haven't had in a while. And mm-hmm. maybe I'll love it. Maybe I won't. But I'm extra excited now, knowing how miserable Brett's going to be. <laughs> Did you see the Jim and Andy documentary? No. Nah. You should check it out if you want more goofy Jim. It's, yeah. it's a different kind of goofy Jim, but... Because Jim it's... Carrey is not goofy anymore. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he's hermit now. So, so Patrick, what do you expect? We know you're I'm a movie ex- expert with your face. <laughs> I'm ex- <laughs> I, <laughs> the sarcasm is dripping <laughs> off. <laughs> your um, I'm expecting um, to laugh at a couple things that, from a nostalgic purpose, but I'm also expecting to be horrified by a number of things that I thought were funny as a kid. That, <laughs> through, through the lens of today. Will seem very, very inappropriate and That's a uh, cringeworthy. Good if if Crocodile uh, Dundee surprised us with offensive stuff, then yeah. this movie I'm, could be a minefield. The end. There's, I'm thinking I of the end. I don't want, I'm not gonna spoil it for Asher Sam, but the end. Yeah, Uh-oh. Patrick knows. There's gonna happening. be there's gonna be some words about the end. Yeah, he doesn't. Oh, no. He doesn't like rape an animal or anything, right? <laughs> he loves the. Oh animals. my god, that would probably yeah. be less he, offensive. He but... loves them, oh, so it's no. consensual. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, not no, if they're robots. guys, there's no way this could be good. I will say, I have seen the end to one of these Ace Ventura movies, and I I thought that it was the second one. It could be this one, but. The ending I remember is horrifically offensive towards women. So let's God. buckle up, you guys. <laughs> oh, uh, God. We're going to watch Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Thanks, uh, viewers, We did find it's listeners. on the paid services like iTunes, not on your Netflix. Um, but yeah, I, I think we're ready for some fighting Uh-oh. after uh, we watch this movie. <laughs> thanks so much for voting this up in the polls. You I'm monsters. so excited. Sincerely, thank you. <laughs> Luna, this is your fault. <laughs> I'm just happy that finally Brett's choice in the poll lost. It brings me joy. 
to see you has suffer. His, has his choice won every yeah, time? Yeah, I feel like I lose all the polls. No, you like always swayed the poll in your direction <laughs> all, every time. And the one time you lose, you're being such a baby about it. Well, you, you hold that until after the movie is how right. I'm being a baby about it. <laughs> Okay. So we're going to watch this thing and we'll be back on the mic after the movie to see what we think. A wee mo wet. A wee mo wet. Oh. In the jungle, the mighty jungle. Was that song in this movie? I don't. Or was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. They were doing it. Oh. When they were rubbing their parts together. Uh, right. Uh, oh, man. So I guess I I could say that I really, really, really enjoyed. I had Torturing such us? a great time watching Bryce watch this movie. <laughs> like this was not. He a had movie. the best faces. Like the funny is a, oh, is man. one level removed. The funny is watching people react to the stupidity. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, because I think this was he was telling me earlier that this was one of his. I think this was a film he liked as a kid, nice. you know, like one of the one of the films he liked. But I don't think he's seen it in a while. Or no, it was yeah. the mask. It was the mask. I'm sorry, I'm wrong. It did seem like at some point Bryce was putting pieces together, and you did too. Ash, oh yeah, you were more vocal, but watching Bryce realize what was about to happen was. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> I wish I had just watched Rice's face. I missed all that. Mm, you missed the best too busy part of the movie. watching the train wreck that was on the screen. <laughs> I feel like Ash at your Crocodile Dundee episode right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was no way it could be good. <laughs> but like, it could. What's, which is worse, though? I uh, remember loving it as a kid. This movie. This movie yes. is worse. Yeah. This is. And so now, <laughs> has that opinion shifted a bit? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, or- I feel like I feel like Crocodile Dundee was remarkably not funny, and this movie had some really good There's gags. Really, there really were some funny really stuff. funny moments. Like, if there's jokes like I don't respect that, but I'm laughing. Yeah, like there there were funny parts, like the um. The uh, bubble wrap that he steps yeah, on was, was like a great gag. gag. I love the fact that like the running gag that his windshield is just fucked up for the rest of the movie and he has to put his head out the window. Like yep. uh, there's some really like brilliant comedy or the the, the scene that we did rewatch was the yeah. cello as he walks past the cello player in the fancy party and he like pulls his arm yeah. so that the cello player messes up. I, did, I completely miss that till you guys backed up. Yeah. Like there's some fun little jim carrey things in here that i thought were pretty funny and half like halfway through the movie i was like this isn't that bad i don't know what what brett was complaining about (laughs) this is the perfect time so luna was watching this the same time we were and she texted me i just want to read you a little bit she says i'm two-thirds through still not too inappropriate Right? And yeah. Then, and then I responded, wait for it. <laughs> and then her next message almost immediately, mm, okay, never mind. Yeah. I the say, second... you just got there? She says, right now. Yep. The second I put it together, I just felt so bad for Sean, Sean Young because, like, yeah. no offense to her, but every time I see her, I am like, she does look kind of like a man. And then when I put that together, I was like, poor Sean Young. No. How could you do that to her? Uh, We're just, like, on a roll for, for picking, yeah. like, inappropriate. Yeah. We didn't pick it. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Internet. <laughs> do in that scene. She's just kind of standing there wobbling. Uh, yeah, I didn't under, like, it seemed like she was, well, I guess she does have a history of being she's, mentally unstable. So maybe she was, like, having a total meltdown. Maybe she's trans and nobody treats her with respect. It was like, so I that's the thing too. I couldn't understand, though, like, and they never really resolved is, like, did she just become, like, like, is she a legitimate trans person that was like i want to be a woman or did she just become a woman because she saw it as a way of getting revenge we they never really the answer found... if it was a well-written story or yeah. more strongly but... implied that she was trans because she was just mentally ill 
Or, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or that she found a dead hiker and said, this, I'll take somebody's identity. Yeah. Like, and, then, and then become a police lieutenant in, what, eight years? Yeah. yeah. No big right? deal. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's interesting, Brett. Like, oh, she's mentally unstable, therefore transgendered. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. a horrible... Well, and then, of course, everybody throwing up because oh dear god oh, yeah yeah man. how terrible <laughs> yeah although yeah, it is kind of funny that everybody had kissed her like it, that was like the dolphin yeah <laughs> just like it was it was her go-to move when someone was kind of getting too close to her yeah. secret or something like that or yeah to derail them but i think i think the terrible part is like because she was the wrong gender like she deserved to be undressed forcefully in front of her entire like workforce like that's horrible. Yeah, and it's like weird because the movie wants you to draw the line between uh, like, but she was a kidnapper and an attempted murderer, so like, well, it's, so it's okay. okay. Yeah, <laughs> like completely unnecessary too, because Dan Marino's right there. And he yeah, no, that's she's, what... she's the one who kidnapped me, not <laughs> Ace. Exactly. Right here, like, like... Or like the other thing I said was during that scene, uh, Courtney Cox still has a gun to the police officer the whole yes. time. I'm like, can't, <laughs> can't she put the gun down now? And like it's what? Cocked. It all of it didn't make any sense. I mean, what they're doing is pacing wise and rhythm of the movie. They needed something so completely outrageous as the mm. big climax of the movie. And on that level, it works. But, you know, it's kind of creepy. Well, but, it's just like done for all like the reactions well, to it are right. done it's for all, all the wrong right. reasons. And like, I mean, you can have a villain who happens to be trans. Yeah. It's just the fact that, like Nick was saying, they basically made it, it's a byproduct of mental instability. It didn't occur to me, you know, 20 years ago, but now it's like, oh, that's jacked up. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's... Yeah, weird the things that, like, yeah. have changed as far as social awareness, I guess. So I have a question for you guys, because this actually wasn't the ending that I... I have seen, so I guess I've seen the ending of the second movie. Mm-hmm. And is it in a jungle? Yeah. Anything and that's jungly is second movie. Like <laughs> you're picturing the spears and the legs and stuff. Isn't it like, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what I remember. There's possible like... Possible spoilers for Ace Ventura 2. Possible spoilers. <laughs> a movie that's like almost 20 or so years old. It's possible spoilers, but it, as you would say, it's unknowable information. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never um, watch that. But wasn't it like... There's like a tribal girl who's being married to somebody and she's yes. supposed to be a virgin. And then he comes out and he's upset that she's not a virgin because she like had yeah. sex with Ace Ventura, which yeah. I just remember yeah, thinking that like right. that is so yep. that in itself was like horrible for women, too. So it's like a pattern with these movies, I guess. I saw one fun connection to um, Let's Rewatch in this uh, movie. Oh, oh yeah. yeah? The uh, the billionaire guy is in Blade also. Uh, oh, Ludo Kier. He's, he's in downsizing uh, too. He's a good yeah. creepy guy. Yeah, Aww. he's like the, the again. That just makes me feel bad for the. He's like awesome. the president of the vampires in Blade. That's interesting because the whole time I was watching downsizing, I'm thinking like I feel like I've seen him in a version of Dracula, and he's like <laughs> eyebrow creepy guy. Why is he in this movie? It's weird and, to think of Blade as a version of Dracula. Right, because I have very fuzzy <laughs> memories. He, isn't well, isn't in, Blade in fight, the, fighting Draculas? In the third yeah. one, so the Draculas. abysmal third one, he's fighting Dracula. What? That it, They literally have Dracula in a Blade movie? Yeah, in the third, in Blade Trinity. Yeah, Blade goes off With the Ryan rails. Reynolds and Jessica Biel. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds? Yeah, because what? Dracula yeah. is in the comics. But they call him Drake. They update They update Dracula to Drake. But it is oh, Dracula. how hip of them. Wow. It would be pretty fun if you had Dracula played by Drake. That would be yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally just debating, should I break into a Drake song? And <laughs> oh, that you'll rap like, for us. But like, the other uh, one, no. <laughs> I was thinking of a Drake song I could put vampire words into. Oh, uh, Yeah, so embarrassing moment for me, speaking of Drake. I thought it was mm-hmm. Hotline Blink. It's hotline oh. bling. Mm-hmm. Google Home schooled me and Brett <laughs> laughed at me a lot. Yeah. So I noticed, I don't know if you noticed, Patrick, but the Sean Young's desk has a banana in between two apples. I so it looks like a that. dick and balls. <laughs> oh, yeah. And now I'm wondering if that's their like way of hinting that she's actually a man. Oh, I think you're right. Like yeah. that, that is one of those subtle pieces of subtext that Jim Carrey 
would come up with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just put that on. This is a very subtle, guys. Do you know what I did not ever notice or get until this viewing was the gun digging into my hip line? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Little me was dumb. I just feel so bad for Sean Young after watching this movie. Well, I mean, this is a tough thing to say, like, after the thing that we're really talking about. But, like, aside from that, she was really bad in this movie. Oh, yeah. (laughs) She was just not good. Well, she wasn't given much to work with either. Yeah, she's just this, the yelling. She's like a one note. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so is, is Ace Ventura, like, based off of something? (laughs) Well, I was watching, like... Uh... There's definitely Sherlock Holmes in it. There's Mulder from X Files in it. But Ace Ventura wasn't a character before this. No, I think this That's was original. okay because this movie felt like you know like maybe there was an SNL skit or some uh, shit where it was like oh. that was funny for two minutes, right? And then yeah. they tried to write a movie around it. This movie feels like somebody was like, "Oh, wouldn't it be funny if the Miami Dolphins really had a dolphin?" And then like they tried to write a movie around it. And then, like, somebody was like, what if it's Jim Carrey? And the, then they just, like, amplified that character f- to fit Jim Carrey. I mean, this is definitely Jim Carrey's idea. Oh, yeah. Oh, did he write this movie? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, this is 100% your hilarious on In Living Color want to do a movie. Ooh. Ooh. I didn't know he yeah. wrote the script. Oh, no, this is all his original idea. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. I feel like the whole dolphin plot is, like, this... It was this other like horrible movie, and then they're like, "Let's inject Jim Carrey into it," yeah, you know. And then maybe he thing. came up with the pet detective part and that character, and like blew it out. But it's kind of like I've heard before, like the same thing with Robin Williams. When you have Robin Williams on a movie, like you give him the script, but he's gonna go off script and just like improv, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and I feel like that's. I mean, a lot of the stuff that we did enjoy about the movie was yeah, the Jim, Jim Carrey. Carrey's off script moments. Yeah, yeah, like the bubble wrap thing. There was probably not bubble wrap on the floor at the first couple takes. Mm-hmm. Like, or his Mission Impossible covert, you know, he like jumps over the railing and then jumps back and then scales the wall to a door that's just right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, the script probably said, you know, Ace Ventura sneaks out window or yeah. something. We're, we're going to say bad stuff about this movie, but there was some really, really funny shit here. Yeah, there's funny gags for sure. There's gags that are way over the top, but honestly, like the first scene where he steals the dog, I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like, I wish it had stayed a much smaller scope like that. And he was just like helping people find their lost pets or something. Well, like even his like catchphrases and stuff, uh, like the first scene, it opens with the box and he's like, how are you doing today? Alrighty then. Like, yeah. And and, like the idea of just cutting someone off is funny, but then like instantly I'm like, I hate him (laughs) so much. Or like the (laughs) idea of him, like (laughs) gaslighting this rich guy into thinking that he's serving like, (laughs) like food that's gone bad yeah like the ideas are really good (laughs) yeah there's funny gags but the the plot is terrible yeah everything that was writing and dialogue didn't didn't really stand up (laughs) (laughs) so the whole movie yeah yeah i know you said it's funny but one thing i noticed too is um, he, he, you know, fucks with people nonstop, but he's kind of a dick to just random people who don't deserve it. I know he laughed, yeah. he laughed when he pulls the cello guy. But that guy's just there doing his job. And it's just yeah. like totally like the cops. It's, it's, he almost runs over. He did like, run like, them over. Or he did <laughs> run them over. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah. Or like all the poor black athletes that he just harassed. Hey, chloroform yeah. that one dude. Yes. Yeah. 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 They're just left in there on the field. Like, oh, he'll wake up fine. Mm-hmm. See, I thought that whole sequence was pretty funny, personally. But he was harassing more than he was harassing more than just black people. I don't and I think that to sound like I'm laughing. Brett, cut that all out. I think that scene probably works better if you recognize football players. Yeah, yeah. I well, know. that was probably pretty great because they were all real football players, and I think they were more recognizable at the time. Like, it's, right? Like, who the hell? I don't know. I'm not that big of a football fan. I don't know these guys anymore. I yeah. mean, Dan Marino, I guess, but like, no one else. I was going to say, like, yeah, I totally recognize Dan Marino, but maybe I recognize him from this. 
<laughs> yeah, we're not football people. I found the plot, and maybe it is because I don't know anything about football, but I found the plot like actually kind of hard to follow. Yeah, I did too, actually. Yeah, I was like, wait, I don't understand <laughs> that. And I think that's also coupled with just the fact that like the logic of the film doesn't make any sense. Like, who are these two people helping her out? And like, in defense of the movie, I think you were distracted by dogs during a couple important clues. But like the logic of like, I found this jewel from a, you know, Miami Dolphins ring, you know, in the pool. And therefore, whoever this jewel like came from, they're the killers. Like, that's such movie logic. Like, people are probably walking yeah, around with those rings. Like, the logic of it just doesn't really. I mean, Makes it did though add up because it ended up leading him to the culprit. Because it's so. movie logic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it does but, bother me a little bit that Finkel Einhorn was wearing the ring the whole time. Like he pulls oh. it off of her hand at the very end. I just assume she put it on yeah, I did at too. the end. Uh, that yeah, she wasn't wearing sense. it the whole time. That would yeah. Make sense. But, you know, kind of dumb to wear it while you're such a unique ring while you're committing a crime at the very yeah. beginning. Yeah. yeah. Although, like... The the whole like jumping to conclusions detective thing like that's what detective stories are like right like getting if you get like real deep into Sherlock Holmes like half of them end with like here's a bunch of stuff I noticed that you didn't and like yeah when you get to write the end first and then write the rest of the story you can make any connection you want yeah or it's like house that was house basically like yeah this person's sick i'm gonna just fucking guess so, and it's funny <laughs> it's funny this came up because and not this is not i'm not trying to push it i'm dealing with this right now in my sequel i'm working on because i have a small subplot that's Ooh, writer's room. Ooh. Uh, no but, but i'm definitely <laughs> that's something i'm trying to be really conscious of is how can make sure it's not it's actually makes sense the the steps of like solving a mystery Mm -hmm. are they or is it incredibly contrived and plot driven yeah that's got to be difficult like how do you give someone a clue without being like that's the answer yeah yeah Yeah, i think that was like maybe another reason why i found this plot confusing because there wasn't really like a red herring the whole time he was chasing like i guess the rich guy was in the beginning but he very quickly like you know I think that was, but there wasn't like a, but for like, that was just in the very beginning. Like he, he goes in and he's like, Oh, it's not that guy. And so it's like, there was just, there was no one else that he was chasing. And so it just like seemed kind of obvious at one point that it was the only other potential bad guy is Mm. her, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I think I said during the movie, don't don't apply logic too hard at this movie. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Seriously. it was all for him to do a crazy character. Yeah, well, f- phrases like way at the beginning. Uh, Sam, I think, was the first to, to sh- shout out that this movie seemed real long. Oh, was yeah. it? Yeah. So at the end, the movie finished, and it said it was only an hour and twenty five minutes. Yeah. Damn, it felt so much longer. <laughs> <So long. laughs> Felt every minute of it. Oh, my God. So, of course, Courtney Cox's character is exactly the sort of character that I hate. You know? Yeah. Like, you as the writer can write, you know, then she looks at him and falls in love. You know, (laughs) anybody can write that on a sheet of paper. Yeah. But... It's like literally the scene before he called her ugly and then suddenly they're, like, in love. It's like, what? Saddlebags. Yeah. (laughs) Like there is um, no reason for her to have that's any right. attraction to this he, motherfucker. He flips on her. She gets the call. They go. He suddenly he's nice to her. <laughs> freaking, yeah. Well, he figured out that crime scene. You know, yeah. That's so impressive. But mm-hmm. I figured out the fucking crime scene. Like he walks in <laughs> yeah. and the lady's like, I heard a scream. And I'm like, well, obviously then he didn't kill himself. Well, then maybe you should go talk to Courtney Cox. <laughs> <laughs> you think I got a chance? I Maybe? think I got a chance. <laughs> so Sorry, here's Bryce. one plot that I didn't understand. Why was that guy murdered? I don't know. I don't know. Because trans joke. What? What? <laughs> that was that letter that he found in the desk. They went on a date, and then the joke was, and he fa- he found out that she was a man, and then she and then 
that was the martyr time. Oh, you think oh. it was strictly that? It had nothing to do with him recognizing her because he's been with the organization forever? I mean, that was the direct text of the movie. Like, that's what he, you know, he called out. But uh, there's, I mean, yeah, real world, probably more nuanced than that. <laughs> so then two things. One, I didn't understand that the guy who found the note wasn't at his own desk. So I thought the note was to him, which is why I was confused. And then the other thing is if she went on a date with him, then maybe she really is trans because like, or, why would you go on a date with him then? That's I was, well, the, the question. Why go on a date with him? Yeah, exactly. Someone who could potentially recognize you. Yeah. I think you guys are trying too hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you could just say this story is extraordinarily flimsy. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and you can even hate the movie for that, but that's what it is. Like the point is let's let Jim Carrey do a ridiculous character. Uh I just don't understand like what the the like I just don't understand the steps in this process, I guess. Uh, I enjoyed all the 90isms, like the 90s guitar. Their, their intimate moments and yeah. Yeah. or Tone Lokes like multicolored sweatshirt. Oh yeah. Wait, or, so uh, who was Tom Lokes in this? The, the cop the is his friend. Yes. Oh. With a gravelly voice. African American gentleman. Oh. I guess the, the good the answer, cop. Like the good cop. The one, the one that found the note. <laughs> Not the bad Monica. cop. Yeah. Courtney Cox. But I guess to to answer the question that Mitch posted on Facebook, like. You know, let's talk about musicians who do great performances. Not I this don't one. think this falls in that category. No, no. Like, I think Tone Look was okay. See, like, I again, I didn't know. Towards the end of the film, it was like, oh, they're friends. But I didn't even understand that he was Ace Ventura's friend. Only a friend could put up with that shit. Yeah, he, I guess. <laughs> that's, he's talking to him out of his ass, and he's like, hey, mm-hmm. you got to get out of here. I'll get in trouble. Right, which I just uh, thought was his technique of like trying yeah, to get him to tell too. him what he wanted because uh, he knew that he hated it. Are you saying yeah. that they're, they they had no chemistry or anything? No together? chemistry. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I'm Tom Logan now... A said no? Yeah. <laughs> Or in his or his ass or both. <laughs> yeah, I think I think uh, Tom Luke and Ace's ass just met that minute. Yeah, because that's how I read it. Was like right, like he just comes in and bothers the cops. I exactly. No, they yeah. like friends outside. Tone Luke gave him a tip halfway through the movie when he was doing the ass stuff. No, 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 no. Later. Later. there was some important bit of information that he called and told him about. So right, this is point. another movie in many movies that we've watched that is wildly inappropriate for children, but there was a Saturday morning cartoon. Well, I totally thought this was really? a kid's film because oh, yeah. I remember at the like when it came out, I remember kids saying that they had watched it or like I remember oh, yeah. kids, kids of my it. generation. What what was this rated 13? Yeah, what uh, was the 15? actual... Oh, hold on. I have it up here. Okay. I have the, the information I, for the cartoon up here. Because I definitely saw it at like 12 or 13. Or well, and oh, yeah. even if even if there was horrible stuff in it, the movie was called Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. That sounds like it a sounds movie like you would a take a kid yeah. to. Yeah. It was rated PG-13. So, yeah. Kids over 13 totally could have seen this. There's like a fucking... There's two I'm, sex scenes. I'm pretty sure I saw it without my... Just, Dropped off at the movie theater. Uh, there's wow. well, there's one and a half sex scenes. That first one was not in any way representative of what sex is like. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, it's movies like this that taught us what sex was. But then watching it, it that that scene in the beginning where he's holding on to the top of the doorway. Yeah, and he's just like hula hooping happening. around the room. So did they dress Sean Young? up and put like a mustache on her for the pictures of them because she looks nothing like yeah. that man no, i don't understand yeah. it's the hormone therapy it worked it was really good good in 1994 <laughs> was it that good back then i can get that surgery done over the weekend i guess he did say that yeah. <laughs> Fuck. okay uh, oh there was the other guy that the wasn't quoting the movie for the listeners yeah <laughs> So you you said the landlord was also from Breaking Bad, yeah. the bell yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So one of the Salamancas, of mm-hmm. the yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. So Why? did you watch this Saturday Night Morning cartoon that you brought up? I I remember there being something in the cartoon of him like hanging out of the window while he drives, 
Mm. Like that's like his whole life from now on. Is it's his, his head he out just of never like, fixes his car. That is the it's most like, flash animated looking thing I've ever seen. It looks real bad. Holy shit. Uh, yeah, it does show. look really yeah. bad. You, flip that show, oh, show Patrick. It's ridiculous. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if you can. I can, I can see. No, yeah, I can see. Up, up. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear God. <laughs> yeah, it looks like something that somebody threw together over the weekend. Oh, I want to make a catalog <laughs> of Saturday morning cartoons that were derived from movies that are were in no way appropriate for child, young children. Like, like Beetlejuice? Beetlejuice? Yes, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that Beetlejuice was, is up there. Uh, what else? Did they, there was there's, there's other one. There was one other one I remember. I'm trying to think. So does she just have like Stockholm syndrome in that cartoon then? I don't. No, think they were just married. good friends. No, the yeah. people who created that show never saw the movie. Yeah, yeah I guess. Yeah. It feels like. I, I would argue. The Ghostbusters movie isn't super kid friendly, yeah. young kid friendly. So, something else I was going to say. I don't think RoboCop was a cartoon, but I had action oh my figures, God. Uh, which seems really inappropriate. Yeah, I mean, I had Terminator. Yeah, that'd be figures. really bad. Yeah, but and RoboCop, that, like everyone's like doing coke in that movie, yes. and like yeah. shooting holes. I had like Terminator people. One action figures too, though. Yeah. Like not even like like the more uh, kid friendly two. There was like uh, the, the horror movie Terminator, and I had the. <laughs> Evil. Wow. Oh, is that a robot? it is a cartoon. <laughs> wow. wow. No, but you're yep. right. I, of course, I remember the Ghostbusters cartoon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Robocop cartoon. But that at least makes a little more sense because the sex in that movie is a little more subtle. Like, if you're a kid, you're not going to jump to those conclusions. But it's. Robocop? No, no, in Ghostbusters. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, Cause, like what? Because uh, the one guy doing blow with two prostitutes is pretty not subtle (laughs) no i have not seen robocop it's pretty gnarly i haven't seen robocop no this always reminds me that our neighbor no it's not is the mayor from robocop too talking about really robocop is horrible wait wait i we got a whole different thing going on now robocop is a masterpiece no we have to watch satire we can totally watch satire it's brilliant satire. if you watch it as satire of violence obsessed consumerism culture it's Oh. Two like, and uh, three are just two right. and three are two empty and three shell they were trying to make <laughs> real movies. Well, yeah. let me tell you, if you watch it, you don't know that it's a horrible movie. <laughs> I mean, that's like Starship Troopers, right? Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. I guess also so. same director, Paul oh. Verhoeven. Oh. So that's what Paul Verhoeven does. By the way, RoboCop two, directed by the same guy who did Star Wars two. So Empire Strikes Back and RoboCop 2, both directed by Irvin Kirshner. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. That is weird. And one's a lot better than the other. Yeah. <laughs> so what was with the technology in this movie? That guy's screaming. Oh, for the hippie guy? I always <laughs> love, like, fake tech in movies that just doesn't make any sense. Like, Sam was like, how does he have, like, a whole bio on this guy, yeah. like, loaded up on his yeah. computer? But that was pretty funny. I don't yeah. Know, like... I wish there was more of that guy. In yeah, Ace. he was interesting. Like, that that was actually a pretty funny concept. Like this old nerdy dude who's obsessed with pets that hangs out at like death metal concerts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like the uh, Greenpeace super activist. Yeah, yeah. And his like his tech is way better than the police. Yeah, yeah. that See, was that... a real band, by the way. Oh, really? It's can- yeah, you look at this. That's Cannibal Corpse. They're called. I'm not into oh, death metal. I just know that that's cannibal. a real band. Oh, wow. I recognize them a little yeah, a bit lot of, I went through a brief period. Yeah, a lot of oh. my <laughs> friends were into Cannibal Corpse when we were younger. Yeah. yeah, you can't tell by looking at Sam now, but she used to be yeah. a metalhead in college. <laughs> in college? In high no, school. In high, high school, school, sorry. Wow. Yeah. And I met her and I was like, hey, stop that. <laughs> <laughs> Like, and she obediently cool. stopped it. No, I no. was like, that's probably a good no. idea, but I'm going to wear these black and purple bondage pants a couple more times to be sure. And then I was like, oh, God. Yeah, okay. You're it's, right. Sam, it's okay. I'll, I'll, you know, in the uh, spirit of camaraderie, I, I wore a fake chain medallion to my homecoming <laughs> so, junior year. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's okay. We all make mistakes. Well, I think yeah. it's the time where you get all your bad fashion out, mm-hmm. just psh, all at once. Mm-hmm. Four years. Done. Just shut it. Yep. Shut it. I know what you're Which, thinking. Just shut it. <laughs> Don't you even get into my bad fashion in high school. For the listener, Brett is looking at Ash like he has some dirt he wants to dish. He does. Good. And you're not allowed. You're not <laughs> allowed. Do it. This is my belief so, that a 10-year high school reunion is like the dumbest thing ever. Yeah, I Who would want to go to, to a high school reunion? 
I went to Europe instead, and I was like, well, in our I, case, it was almost no one. Yeah, <laughs> right. I didn't even want to go to my high school reunion, but somehow I got roped into planning it, and I was like, I wasn't even gonna fucking go to this. <laughs> And then the people be here today. who roped me into planning it complained about the location where I planned it. And I was like, well, fuck you. I didn't even want to do this. I didn't go, but they didn't send out like – it was crazy. We got – I got like an invite for it like a month before it was supposed to happen and couldn't. Mm-hmm. So I didn't yeah. really have a huge interest in it. But yeah, it was weird. I remember not knowing anything about it until all of a sudden it was like a month before. I was like, okay, no. I just remember they, thinking, you people were the worst to me. Yeah, like why, why would I, I want to see, see any you of you again? ever yeah. again, except for the ones that I'm still in contact with? Yeah. No, you go to show them how right. much better you are than them. I don't need it, to do you, that. Nobody goes to a high school reunion with good intentions. Yeah. They go to humiliate the people who are assholes to them. I, it's just it's it's not a thing that we need anymore in the world of of the internet. Well, I feel like a ten year well, college was, reunion makes more sense. Like you've been living yeah. a high school reunion since you left high school, and it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> we especially don't need it anymore with Facebook. It's like you can already keep tabs on that person and tell if you're mm-hmm. doing better than them. You can already see who got too you. religious or like <laughs> has like too many kids. You know, like. You're, you're 22. Patrick, Why do you Patrick. have five kids already? Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. Uh, going in, third one's not off the table. We've talked about it, but we'll see. This will be a Man. while that we're giving ourselves some breathing room. Yeah. This one. I feel like there's not a lot to say about this film because... There like, was not a lot of substance? Yeah. But, like, <laughs> it's just, it was bad, and... Hmm. There's not. I mean, like, 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 like we said. There's some funny gags and moments, but it's not a good movie. No, <laughs> I'm surprised a, you're no. saying that because I thought you were like super into it when at the beginning. No, well, I mean, to finish the thought, like, it wasn't a good movie, but it was really enjoyable. What? Like, I had no. a good time. Really? Wait, so this is your substitute? Oh, this no. is your substitute. No, because I know it's a bad movie. I think Brett thinks the substitute is good. No, I, no, it's, no, it's not a good movie. You should it's, back it's, and listen to that podcast. That it's a great it. movie, but it's not a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I want someone who's better at editing me to, to take a Mark Anthony song, a really romantic ballad, but create a music video just from his scenes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's <laughs> really great. Like you that's sing a to me. Good idea. <laughs> Oh, that's um, so good. But no, I was actually even I, I, I think it, I came in thinking I remember loving this as a kid. I'm sure some stuff's not going to hold up. And it, it even let me down even more, actually. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Yeah. No, that's that sucks. So not one you're going to show your kids. <laughs> no. I mean, maybe as an example, like that's not Bad. OK. Honey. Yeah. <laughs> Don't treat people like that. Like, <laughs> so you guys think. Do you think – I'm still struggling with – I feel like this movie was at least slightly better than Crocodile Dundee because I just feel like Crocodile Dundee – I don't know. Man, it's tough to say. I, I agree. I do agree. And there's there's still my memory of these two movies in my mm-hmm. head. And my memory insists, no, Crocodile Dundee is much smarter and – philosophical really, than this <laughs> yeah even though we just watched it i know that's not true yeah like you thought this felt long like i felt like crocodile dundee i was just like when is this movie over oh my god hmm. i don't know i didn't quite feel that way about this one it didn't feel as long to I, me i feel like the the global impact of, of the two movies makes this one worse because crocodile dundee gave us all oh, that's a knife and <laughs> this gave us Everyone impersonating oh. Jim Carrey in real life <laughs> yeah. for a decade. Forever. I hate that shit. So I much. guarantee it. I'm pretty sure I heard someone say "alrighty" then like a week ago. Uh. <laughs> I've probably still said "like a glove." Uh. Uh. Sorry. Now, Almost now, now that as bad that as your Pauly from. Shore impression. The Pauly Shore impression <laughs> is worse. Don't. Don't. I, I had a friend in college who would always say, "You don't have to tell me. I was there." And I, I did not <laughs> remember it being from this movie. It makes total sense uh, now. So you had but, a friend that did the thing that you've done to us for years, where you've referenced yeah. a movie that we never realized yeah. you were referencing. Yeah. And speaking of Adam Sandler, he used to always say, stop looking at me, swan. 
which was from an Adam Sandler movie. It's like these weird deep oh, cut yes. quotes that mm-hmm. just became part of his day to day dialogue. Yeah, yeah, it's that was like the conversation we had when we did Monty Python, where it's like, I love oh, yeah. Monty Python, but, but fuck people Monty fucking fans. ruined that movie <laughs> by just Wait. quoting it over and over. Holy Grail. Yeah. Yeah. I still love it. I still love oh, it too. Uh, it's fantastic. Good. Undeniably a great movie. But you just yeah. like like the person in high school that would just like quote that movie nonstop is the same person that laughs too hard at certain jokes, you know, where you're just like, I just you're just uncomfortable to but be around. That's bad, but what's worse is the evolution of it. And eventually it became a form of comedy was to just speak in a high-pitched British accent. Right. <laughs> and that's not funny. Like, y- there's no joke that you're telling there. You're just doing this thing yeah. that reminds you of a thing that was funny. That was some of my worst times in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, hate I mean, that's, that's the worst thing that happened to you in high school. You got off light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want me to night with you 10 guys, later? I was subjected to a terrible British accent. (laughs) It was awful. I've been in therapy for 20 years about it. Hey, remember that time he talked with his butt? (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Patrick. I think we're bringing it back up. You know, I will say, Brett, you said that was this whole movie. It's only one scene. No, no, no. It's the whole movie. It, it's the tone of the whole movie, and it's it, certainly... Yeah, it never rose above it, that. I think he does it a lot more in the second the one. Oh, really? Or they bring oh, it back. God. I've seen that one a lot more than this one, too, though. That one. Now I want to watch that one to see if that one will depress me and let me down as much. I mean, the, the butt talking it, was the most highbrow thing in this movie. The what? <laughs> <laughs> when the most intellectual joke. <laughs> yeah. Talking to her ass. I mean, Wayne it is the kind opera. of a metaphor for his character. <laughs> <laughs> he has no idea what he's doing. Like that should be the oh. trailer for this movie. Cause you know, immediately what the movie's all about and whether you want to get into it. Just the butt talking. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm so glad. We've talked so long about the butt talking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, All right. So I was, sorry. You say something. Oh, I was just going to ask where he gets those pants. Cause I've never seen those types of pants. His like pirate movie. pants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There and uh, Halloween costumes. They look kind of kinda like chef pants. Oh no, y'all. They're totally from hot topic. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> hot topic a thing. It's still a thing. Uh, no, I know it? it's a thing now, but was that it a year? thing when this movie came In out? 1994. Oh, I don't know. Find to go. Sleuth it. Hot topic founded. Google. Deep sleuth. Probably I mean, where did all Seattle those metal something. people get their clothes? 1988. Huh? Oh. No so they shit. did get it from Hot Wait, Topic. <laughs> you mean I've been around as long as Hot Topic? That's so depressing. <laughs> uh, now my search knows I've searched for Hot Topic and it's showing me things for Spencer's uh, <laughs> and Paxson. No, mm-hmm. you, no. Yep. That's like That's my one time delete for, history. Delete history. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> one time for Christmas, I was buying gifts for my nieces, and I got some Hello Kitty thing for one of my nieces, and then my Amazon suggestions were just fucked. Yeah, yeah. never buy your Halloween oh. costumes on Amazon. Oof. Man, that's the whole spy stuff is real. I so we moved into I'm my de stressor. I'm a avid gym goer. Love it. My diesel, but where we moved to last year, a new house is kind of a little more of a haul it's not too bad so i was curious on on my phone one night just on the couch i was looking up home gym equipment for the next month mm. everything every banner ad and every website facebook everything mm-hmm. was uh-huh. not just gym equipment but the brand of the sites that i was checking out yeah oh, <laughs> it's crazy it's it's creepy when it works cross device so like if i look at something on my phone then i go on my well it's linked computer. to your ip address or, or you're signed but into your Google account. But my phone at work? Like, does your uh, phone have you a static Android IP? phones, of course you're signed into your Google account. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I won't talk about this if no one else has seen it, but has anyone seen any of Jim Carrey's, like, public appearances lately? Or I remember well, I said Jim Carrey. Jim and Andy. I, I know he's railing against Facebook. Like, he, like, sold all his stock and deleted his account or something like that. Yeah, I don't mean, like, his his acting stuff i mean like uh, ha- like he's he's been on interviews and jim and andy is all an interview is he the horrifyingly existentially depressed jim carrey oh, yes. the whole like time the, the fashion week yes yeah uh oh i wasn't even thinking about that but yeah totally he was also on the uh the norm mcdonald podcast mm-hmm. 
Uh, and something's wrong with Jim Carrey, guys. Well, he just... He just recently came out after the release of Jim and Andy. He came out talking about how he's been chronically depressed for years. Oh, yeah. And that's why he's been a hermit. And he talks about it a little bit in Jim and Andy. So I, I recommend you watch that. Yeah, because all he talks about nowadays is like, is, uh, uh, like, I don't exist. I'm not even a person. It's just the, you know, I don't have a career. There's just stuff that I've done that you remember. And like, it's like, damn, dude, that sounds real depressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of that thing, right? Where like comedians uh, kind of go hand in hand with depression, unfortunately. And um, it's actually... That podcast that I just t- just started listening to that Brett and I were talking about recently is called um, The Hilarious World of Depression. And it's this guy who just interviews um, comedians and talks about depression and how they deal with it. And um, But it's, yeah, I think that's just a common trait. And if you look at somebody like Jim Carrey and Ron Williams who are like so large and over the top, and then once you make that connection, it's like, oh, I can see how they could be horrendously horrendously depressed yeah well brett and i were kind of talking about it a few weeks ago and i think it has to do with like when you're a comedian you have to be really observant you have to watch the world you have to see things and then you have to kind of interpret it in a funny way and you have to be really empathetic because you have to know what people are going to find funny or not Mm -hmm. so it makes total sense that they'd be more likely to be depressed because well also most of the time it's a coping me- mechanism you know like they they the depression came before the comedy yeah. and the comedy is a way of dealing with the depression yeah yeah oh so we really went to some fun places here <laughs> remember how wacky he was with that package going <laughs> around and it was all fragile and stuff yep. that's Fake not that how stuff. delivery guys act <laughs> But he wasn't a real delivery guy. He was undercover. It, def- it definitely felt like like the beginning of this movie. I was like, yeah, this is a kids movie. Like that feels like such kids movie humor and like the butt talk. You feels need to like- check out Ace Ventura Jr. I saw that what? that was a thing <laughs> and I'm kind of sad that it's a thing. Isn't there like a yeah, son of the mask? Yeah. Yeah. I think it started Jamie Kennedy. We'll see. Oh. Uh. All right, well, I guess we should take this on home. Uh, all right, I'm looking at you, Brett. How, how do you feel? Are you mad? Paraphrasing the Jim Carrey movie we should have watched, somebody should have stopped him. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've got to get Ace Ventura to get everything that comes after Ace Ventura. I guess, but damn. I mean, you guys could still do it to like, get the taste out of your mouth. <laughs> uh, that Jim Carrey taste. Get uh, off Twitter, Ash. Sorry. Yeah, no, the, <laughs> you I, were on it. I think I'm where you guys are with like, because I enjoyed some of those gags a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. The physical comedy is really funny. Yeah, you know, like you can't deny that Jim Carrey is a master of physical comedy. It's but it's hard to watch his physical like the other stuff he does when he's doing like the weird face contortion yeah all the, all the time it's kind of like like steve carell in the first season of the office we were just talking about this i just started watching the office. how like the first season of the office you've like if it's been a long time since you've seen the first season go back yeah. and watch it and you're like oh my god i forgot how cringeworthy steve carell is in the first yeah. season and doesn't he just stay like that though i thought no, the point of the they office make was him to more hurt. lovable <laughs> and like nice and in the first season he's just like horribly I ignorant just, i remember like i felt the uncomfortableness oh, yeah. in yeah. my I'm body i'm watching it now yeah that, yes that like, diversity yeah. day episode i'm like oof oh. yeah <laughs> I and, love- there's this one part where Jim answers the phone pretending to be Michael Scott and he's like hanging out. He's like, okay, all right, bye. All right. <laughs> yeah. Which is like the perfect imitation of Steve Carell. Yeah. But like, I feel like Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey's physical, like his face contortions are like that, where it's like sometimes he goes a little too far and he really needs somebody to rein him back in. Yeah. You know? uh, how will they know I mean, that I'm making a joke unless I'm doing a face? Yeah. And then you can't see that on a podcast, but <laughs> I was making <laughs> I mean, he, he dials it back in Batman Forever. 
you know, very nuanced. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'd forgotten about that. Oh, that movie. That was my suggestion as the other one on the poll before whatever That's the fourth one. Really? Oh, um, but, but that one's like bad and we all know it's bad and we're going to watch it just to confirm it's bad. <laughs> yeah, that one has a worse Rotten Tomatoes rating than this Is one. Is that the one with the, really? the mm-hmm. nipple Batman? Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, wait. Wait, no. Or was that the I, next one with George Clooney? Uh, George Clooney's the Clooney nipple. Oh, nipples. Like you're right. Yeah, yeah. Clooney had nipples. Clooney wasn't in both of those. Yeah, I can't no, no, Kilmer. that was Val Kilmer. Yeah, uh, Ice Man, uh, Batman, uh, Ice Batman. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I'll just drop in my final thoughts. I think it's short. Like, I think it was like I said before. It's not a good movie, but I really had fun watching us watch the movie exactly some <laughs> of the best stuff was seeing people react to it so this movie is the two girls one cup of movies oh, <laughs> god you're just trying to get all the horrible references in this episode aren't we god <laughs> party. somebody else oh. <laughs> thank you goat seed sam you're somewhat responsible for his stupidity what did you think of this movie uh guys there was no way it was gonna be good and it wasn't. <laughs> that that's that's it. I don't know. <laughs> and I know that's how I feel. I, I feel just, like I it was bad and it, we're done. It was bad I, as a woman of fifty percent of the cast turned out to actually be a dude. So like cool, thanks for that. Like it's the two <laughs> women in your story, one of them is actually a dude. Cool. And like and then you harass her. Like, come on. I don't and know. The, the only remaining woman fell in love with the main character. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's her job. Yep. What's the opposite of charming? Is it Charmin? like noxious? Is it is there like an Trump. anti-charm? Trump. <laughs> 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 anti-charm. Uh, All right, Ash. Yeah. Settling? I don't Toxic? know. Toxic? I don't know. What? Loved it? Yeah. It was great. No. Horrible. <laughs> really bad. At least this at least No, mediocre. <laughs> no, pretty good. I still I still think there were some funny gags in there that I laughed several times. And I feel like I would love to see this movie redone. Me too. Because I'm thinking I, that. Oh, I think cast it. I oh, mm. Okay. Hmm. Because the Ace Ventura. Oh, yes. no. Oh. Over the top yeah. For like no. the over the top. Yeah. <laughs> I hate Kevin Hart. See, oh. look for the pets. <laughs> <laughs> that was just as funny as an impression. I want to see that. Or what if it's like, like, I love the idea of a pet detective in general. Yeah. Like, that's the world I like. So imagine like a Parks and Rec version of a pet detective. A season, sorry. Yeah, or like, why does it have to be a man? Could it be a funny female comedian? And then maybe this would work way better and be less creepy and weird. Yeah, I like the idea of somebody who respects animals more than people. Yeah. yeah. But in a charming way. Yeah. And adds like a Sherlock Leslie Holmes Note it. kind of character. Yeah. yeah. You, you said in a charming way, and I was like, oh, okay. So I was like, just any vegan. Yeah. Well, uh, I know. He's <laughs> militant, but, but like, he has a way to make that charming. Oh, you know what you didn't talk about? He totally made a having sex with the animals joke. Yes. Yeah, he <laughs> did. Yeah. He did. It, but it's so, funny. That one was funny. Come on. <laughs> no, it's like, she's like, you really love animals only when it's cold or something or when it gets really cold. Oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> that was in the same, right there in the same scene uh, when they're looking okay. through the files. It's like, I, don't do, I don't do people. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That was it. I don't do people. It was like an unintentional unintention, joke about having sex with animals. So in defense of, of Nick here, was this movie like just too high concept? For the execution. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying is like, I feel like this whole weird, like complex story about this dolphin and football, like it's like, too high concept. It needed to be more like down to earth and simple. It's, it's one of those things where every time we talk about a plot point, I'm like, that's hilarious. But we just watched a non funny thing. Bad, yeah. <laughs> Except I thought it was funny. I feel like it's a great, yeah, it's a great concept that just didn't. It was not well executed. Okay. Was he too young? Does does Jim Carrey get better? Maybe. You mean like when he does the more serious? I thought he was much better in Bruce Almighty. Jim and Andy. How many times do I have to say it? Oh. <laughs> <I can't. laughs> 
<laughs> but he's gotten more depressed as he's gotten older. And I actually really like some of his serious movies. And like you can read it in the movies. You get to like Liar Liar and Truman Show and Majestic. Because yeah. I remember Liar Liar did not get a lot of votes, but I remember Liar Liar being great. Me yeah. too, actually. Yeah, I liked that a lot. I bet yeah. that also has some very dated humor though in it. But I feel like it was Jim Carrey like reeled back a yeah. bit. Like somebody was there controlling him. And it may have been him. Like I think maybe he was just getting older. Like, how old was he? Like, he had to have been early 20s here. Like, right. He was just, like, the stupid shit we did at 25. Come on. <laughs> yeah. You know? I think he did get better as he grew up. So, take us home on this, Patrick. Was this actually as good as we remembered it? I loved this movie as a kid. And now watching it again, I, I feel like a real big Lahoosa her. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you. Were you an L7 weenie? Yes. <laughs> no. reference. Uh, all right. Well, that was our uh, our pet detective. So uh, you're you're on the Twitters, right, Patrick? I People can am, find you. I am mm-hmm, at, at the pet Edwards. I am uh, kind of the only social media I'm very active on. But, okay. Yep. On Twitter can, a lot. We can find face. We can find space tripping on Amazon. Yep. Uh, Amazon. Kindles. Target, Kindle, any major, you know, Barnes & Noble carries it. Not um, every store carries it, but Barnes & Noble as a company carries it. Yeah. Go to your local and demand they order it. Yeah. Sci-fi, but, uh, comedy. Yep. And- uh, it's, yeah. The movie, it's The Hangover in Space with Aliens. Thanks. <laughs> and uh, it's also on uh, Audible now as an audiobook, too. Oh, really? Uh, Who yeah. read it? Uh, a guy named uh, Nick Tukoski. Nick Tukoski. Oh. Um, he's a voice actor. He, I think he's done a bunch of books for them. Nice. He's connected on Twitter. He did a nice job. Did you um, did. get to pick who did it, or is it no, not? No, no. Oh. Amazon went to the publisher and said, "We'll we'll buy the audiobook rights. Here's some money." And oh, they said great, and then they gave me some money, and then I, was <laughs> I like, got okay. a cheeseburger. And then, and then <laughs> they bought a house <laughs> and had another child. Yeah, and the money yeah, is no, gone. So, so they put uh, yeah no, and they did a good job, and I said. Now, if I had a lot of people say, do you, are you going to voice it? I said, no, they, they're they going to have a professional do it. They, <laughs> yeah. they give me money. And they're like, no, that's okay. We got this. <laughs> There's people whose job that is. Patrick, yeah. we love you, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And then I've got, if, if you aren't, if you don't hate the sound of my voice, um, I have another podcast that just recently started. We're four episodes in called For Whom the Dice Roll. We'll play D&D. And even if you don't like my voice. You can you still listen because 90% of the time I'm in a character voice. So <laughs> <laughs> a terrible Southern accent. Oh, it's pretty man. Funny, though. I'm going to have to see that. Mm-hmm. Listen to it. I guess not see it. No. Just I mean, you can just at stare at the art. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank thanks you. for being here. It was a Thank lot you. of fun. Always great to hang out with you. Yeah. If, if, you, if you like the show. This is part of the Last Dash TV network of content. Uh, it's a podcast and a YouTube channel with a cooking show and a drinking show, video game parodies, and lots of other fun stuff. Yeah, we do all those things. Um, I think I'm trying to uh, prepare something. Uh, <laughs> there was something that I wanted to. Well, s- while you're digging that up, I'll say, uh, you know, we, we've got our Facebook group. Yeah, and, and please, please shout out. We're the f- talking about how Mitch posted that thing about like. Are there musicians who turned actors who gave good performances? And, of course, there are a bunch. But next week, or not next week, but next episode, we'll get to see Chris Christopherson in Blade and see how he does. I th- on a, I, I think it's going to be last episode. Oh. You're going to put these in a different <laughs> order? Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Blade is one of my favorite lines of all time. Lizzie Snipes. Some motherfucker's always trying to ice skate uphill. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm very um, excited for that movie now. I remember mm. that, and now it's awesome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so please follow us. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Laugh TV, where you can find our fun stuff. Oh, fun thing. This was the thing I wanted to announce. Uh, we just hit 18,000 subscribers on YouTube. Yeah, congrats. So. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so check it out. Our most recent Let's Drink is Spicy Beers, which was super fun. And I should have a 
gag reel coming out soon where you can it's, watch an extended version of Brett crying. Okay, I was going to say, it's, <laughs> it's the same thing, right? It's, yeah, it's okay, pretty much There's the nothing same funnier thing. that we recorded that episode the, other than me touching my eyes with chili oil. <laughs> yeah, it's more of that. Um, and then please follow us on Twitter. You can follow Laughstash at Laughstash TV and this podcast at Let's Rewatch. And thank you to everybody who voted in the poll. There was like a hundred votes. So thanks, everybody. That's a lot of votes. Yeah. And um, thanks, everybody who tweets at us. And again, uh, check out, like Nick said, if you want to be a part of our Facebook group, you can be... You can get into more discussion with us and other fans about stuff. Patrick's um, in there. Patrick's I'm there, in there. Yeah, yeah. Out there. Oh, um, yeah. We, and, Come with some good ideas in there. Mm-hmm. You guys Space hear goodies. us talking about Mitch and Luna <laughs> all the time. They're the active people in the face group. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook group. It is. The new member made an excellent case for Die Hard being a Christmas movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It's scientific. You didn't have to. <laughs> to defend it. You guys should join the Facebook group. It's a lot of fun, and it only costs a little bit of blood to get in. It's uh, called Let's Rewatch Podcast. Is the group, so you can find us there, and you can just sort of have, uh, you know, more you and you post what you guys want about other movie stuff. Like like Nick said, Mitch is always posting great stuff, and so is Luna, um, and other people are posting suggestions and. I don't know if you can do... Can you do polls on Facebook? I don't know. If you Maybe. can... She's floundering. Sam, take over. Uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to sell it. I'm trying to sell it. Quick, someone start talking from your butt. Hey, look, oh, you can God. do a poll. All right. Well, if you liked our podcast, please give us an awesome review on iTunes or Google Play Music. We love your feedback. And if you've been waiting, stop waiting. Give us a five-star review on iTunes. We're Come so on. close to having a solid fiver on there. Yeah. yeah. We've almost pushed out those haters. Get us to the $5 <laughs> foot long. What <laughs> the fuck did you just say? I need to go back and read the review I left because I think I did it after I had a uh, procedure done where I had to be put under. Oh, my I God. I leaving. I think that's the day. I did like, I did like six podcast reviews from podcasts i like a lot and people just never got around to it and then it, is that what it takes it. you have to be high <laughs> to yeah. get reviews. all right everybody <laughs> smoke some weed and then leave us a review actually that's pretty no, funny I, the- I like this yeah what is your intoxicated review of our podcast leave it on our facebook great i need to go check mine now <laughs> this Thanks, could be man. bad actually I- yeah I came up out of that procedure. My wife was there to drive me home, and I immediately turned her and said, Hey, girl, can I buy you a donut? <laughs> Did she say yes? <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Uh, oh, yeah. She was pregnant. She, of course, wanted to donut. <laughs> so make sure your podcast feed is up to date, and tell your friends we'll be back in another two weeks for another episode of Let's Rewatch. Yeah, next time we're going to watch Funky Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> While eating Chunky Monkey. <laughs> Look at this Funky Monkey, guys. Oh, my God.